Just the other day, I was talking to a colleague of mine. Uh, I don't usually work with him that closely. So we found ourselves talking about our early days. Uh, and soon after that, the conversation started, kind of went down the lines of, you know, how we got to where we were. And somehow we started talking about, you know, our love for cars and motorbikes and whatnot. And we both kind of agreed that we have no idea how we are, you know, how we are alive today. Uh, no idea. You know, in my early days, like 18, 19, 20, man, I was, you know, big into cars, you know, doing hill runs, you know, here in Adelaide. There's like, you know, a hilly, you know, there's a whole bunch of hills around Adelaide. And so we used to kind of Friday, Saturday night, go up there and drive way too quickly, do way too stupid things. Um, and my colleague was saying the same thing, you know, he used to ride his bike on the highway and overtake trucks. And, you know, he told me a story where he, you know, there was an overtaking lane. He was on a highway, you know, doing 110 or whatever. And there was an overtaking, you know, lane uh, that came up. And so he, you know, floored it, tried to overtake this truck. And the truck didn't see him. And so the truck started merging into his lane. And so he found himself going into the next lane over, which is the oncoming lane. Uh, and there was another truck coming the other way. And so he kind of floored it harder because he kind of got caught in the middle of the in the middle of the semi-trailer and so he floored it and somehow he fit through the gap uh it was that close that you know his right hand mirror got taken off by the oncoming truck and you know so we're sitting there sharing these stories you know and how young men specifically you know maybe women as well but you know in my experience young men are such risk takers you know we we do stupid things that you know i look back now i'm like i have no idea how i'm still alive man you know the things i did uh very silly silly things uh and then i kind of told him the same story that I, i'm going to tell you guys just the other day man i triaged the young fella you know, 23 24 he was somewhere like at a beach or something river i don't I can't exactly remember where he was but basically he was a paraplegic um as a result of jumping off a six meter cliff you know head first into the water um he thought the water was way deeper than it really was and so he suffered a head and neck injury, uh, which left him basically paralyzed from like T11, I think, uh, or, or something T11 or T12 down. So, you know, no function of his legs, you know, he's bed bound, ch chair bound, you know. Um, on that particular day, he came because, you know, he couldn't, he couldn't urinate. You know, usually he, you know, puts a catheter in few times a day uh to empty his bladder because he's lost the function of his bladder you know the bladder doesn't work like normal um and so this particular day he had trouble uh so he called the ambulance for them to help him out they couldn't do it and so he, he found himself in ed and i met the young fella and you know i read the story and um just goes to show you man young men are risk takers young men are you know we don't we we want the glory you know we want the we want the empire, we want, we want to conquer, we want to attack, you know, this is kind of a kind of part of our DNA kind of thing. And, you know, this is why we see the things we see in the gym as well. You know, the gym is a reflection of who we are as people. Uh, if you are brave enough to jump over a six meter cliff, if you are brave enough to overtake a semi-trailer, you know, 200 k's an hour, if you are brave enough to go you know, through the hills, middle of the night with your high beams on and going through two lanes, oncoming traffic, you know, basically time lapping, time attacking at one o'clock in the morning in the middle of nowhere. Um, you'll, you're going to be stupid enough to do stupid things in the gym, you know, AMRAP steps on the deadlift, AMRAP sets, you know, on, on the squat, you know, bending your whole back, you know, knee caving in and doing everything and anything to get the next rep. Uh, you know, these type of things are kind of inbuilt to us. And, you know, I'm not sitting here to tell you guys don't do what I did. But Jesus, don't do what I did, man. You know, I, you know, I'm 33 now. I feel like I'm over that little hill of, of insanity where, you know, you feel like you're invincible. I think nursing had a lot to do with my understanding of how fragile life is when you see, you know, people around you basically seemingly like you, you know, normal people who have, you know, who are, who are the statistic, you know, who are, who had that, you know, not so much luck. And so they found themselves in these, you know, bad situations. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm going through my workout and I got to a stage where I hit 160. 
And, you know, I'm still kind of fatigued from yesterday, obviously, and the day before, really. You know, my back is kind of like, you know, giving out and whatever. And I'm not feeling all that confident with it. I felt like I had enough. And I found myself in, like, that moment thinking about 180. Uh, do I load up 180? Uh, then I started thinking about, what am I doing, man? I'm not a kid anymore to think that this 180 is going to change anything. Uh, am I really that crazy to have a bit of fun? to prove to myself that I can 180? Do I really need to overtake that semi? Do I really need to jump off that cliff when I haven't been in the water? I don't know how deep the water is. Do I really need to freaking chuck it in the second gear and, you know, going to that corner at 90? Do I really need to do that? Um, I'm 33 now and I went, nah, man, screw that. I'll just, you know, hit this 160 like I did, head back down to 100 and do a few more sets of 10 and call it a day. You know, I've walked away from that situation. It's kind of like, it's almost like I had a mental battle. You know, I had a debate. There was a discussion between my brain, you know, and, and, and my heart. There was a discussion, you know, and my brain's telling my heart, what are you doing, man? <laughs> why, why would you do that? Um, there's nothing to gain from it. You know, the last thing you want to do is at five o'clock in the morning, do a grind at 180. There's no point in doing that. Um, but these are some of the lessons that I've kind of learned over the, over the years. And it was interesting, you know, was, you know, talking to my colleague, you know, it was like, we're sitting there, you know, he's now almost 40, you know, and I'm, you know, 33 and we're sitting there and we're like, <laughs> oh my goodness, you know, and you know, we see these young, young people come in all the time doing the things they do, you know, you work in emergency, you see the young fellas punching brick walls, punching windows, coming in with lacerations because his girlfriend left him and. Somebody else pissed him off and he thought he would punch the wall. You know, I haven't, I still haven't met a guy who's beaten a brick wall. You know, yeah, your knuckle's going to break, man. Your wrist is going to break. You're going to, you're going to snap your fingers. That's what happens when you punch the wall. Uh, but you know, I, you know, I see those things and I'm like, yeah, man, it's kind of in the same box as the crap I did. Um, it's just interesting how, you know, these type of things, these decisions also infiltrate the gym, you know, <laughs> Some of these injuries that people tell me all the time, you know, like, you know, just the other day I was talking to a fella and he said that he's got a, you know, a back problem and, you know, he's kind of gone from conventional to sumo, um, you know, to kind of work around that. Uh, and I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, yeah, you know, I remember when I was your age, you know, I had a, you know, back scare as well. Thank God I didn't bulge a disc or anything like that. But, you know, I'm just thinking to myself, how did you get a back injury from conventional deadlift. You know, I'm thinking to myself, he's a young fella, he's like 18, 19 years old, 18, whatever he is. He probably went too many reps deep into the set, you know, and he compromised his position. He allowed too much back rounding. Because when you think about it, like a, like a deadlift is, you know, is a freaking hip hinge. You know, why should the back hurt? Well, the back hurts because we, we have too much leeway into the form that we're you know, accepting. You know, so this is the thing about grinding weights out, you know, today you grind it, you allow a little bit of rounding. And then, you know, after doing that for like, you know, for a couple of weeks, that becomes the norm. And then, you know, the week after that or whatever, you allow a bit more rounding. And then you kind of find yourself that, yeah, screw it, man. You know, I've, I've done so much rounding and he hasn't hurt me. Why don't I keep on rounding? Keep on pushing those numbers. And, you know, in, in the in the training log, you keep writing down bigger and bigger numbers, but what you're not writing down is that your form is getting worse and worse and worse. You know, so what are you really gaining out of that? You know, you're not writing down the proper story. Numbers don't tell the story sometimes, the visual. You're not writing down, oh yeah, I, I ran the hell out of this one. Um, so this is where people kind of get tricky with it. You know, same as like when people put on body weight. It's like, oh yeah, I put on 40 kilos in my squat. That's great, man. That's great if you kept your body weight. But what happens a lot of the time, these people put on 40 kilos of body weight. So what have you done? Like, I, I don't know if you've done anything. You know, I honestly don't know if you've done anything here. You just got a big, you just got bigger, you know, and I, uh, unless you're you know, using some substances, I don't know if you can pull 40 kilos of muscle in a year, man. I highly doubt that. So this is where you kind of start, start thinking about things, you know. Uh, we write these numbers down into the training logs, but what do they really mean? What are we actually saying here? Um... And this is where, I, you know, I f like I said, like I feel like I'm over that, you know, crazy hill where, you know, you're, you're, you have erratic you know, thoughts. 
I'm not saying, you know, you're wrong for doing that. This is just part of our hormonal profile. We're men, fucking, you know, testosterone is flying through our brain. We want to, you know, jump through windows, run through walls, you know, get chicks, you know, drive really fast cars and all of that. Um, I'm just trying to say to you, you know, there's maybe there's another story to all of this. Maybe we have to slow down and think. Uh, I mean, when you think about who freaking survives in nature, who doesn't, you know, everyone wants to be that alpha, alpha lion running into the battle, you know, one against 10. But how many of those dudes survive? How many of those guys survive? Uh, this is where, like, you need to have tapered aggression. You know, you know, it's good to be alpha, but you don't want to be, you know, throwing your life away. You don't want to be throwing your back away. You don't want to be throwing your knees away because of a damn rep. Think about it, you know. Uh, this is kind of my lesson that I've kind of learned, and I get reminders all the time about young guys who come in and do these types of things, you know. You know, my colleague with the bike, me with the car, the young fella jumping off the cliff, you know, you name it. There's so many stories, people punching windows, you know, uh, walls, all that kind of stuff. Um, but if you just had that a bit of maturity in that moment to think, why, why do I need to overtake this truck right now? Why can't I just break, wait, go again? You know, okay, it might take me five or 10 minutes or 15 minutes until I find the next over, overlapping lane or overtaking lane. Um, why don't I just go and do some go-karting? Why do I need to go on a public road do the crap that I did? But that was my brain at 18, 19. Everyone around us was all about, you know, when, when was I? Like, I was like 10 years old when the first Fast and the Furious came out. And that was, that was us, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, cars, cars. Let's put a blow off the album. Get out of here, man. Such immaturity. Um, but that's all part of living, man. It's all part of the lessons. Um... I guess if you can if you can muster it somehow, stop and think and look at the bigger picture. Guys, I appreciate you. Uh, everyone on the Patreon list, YouTube comments, Instagram. means a lot to me, guys. Let me get out of here and go to work. Catch you guys later. Peace out.